Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to be playing video games. Uh, I know I have a gaming channel for that now, uh, but I figured, you know, we're going to also talk about some comic book stuff, and uh, we'll do that while we're playing this. And this kind of gives us an opportunity to cross over Venom with some characters that he crosses over with in this comic book series called War of the Realms. So I have Jazz Carnage, and I have uh, Jomily, and Angel, and a lot of people in the chat. If you guys want to jump in and tell me what you think of War of the Realms, feel free to. Uh, the issues we're going to go over today, we're going to talk about War of the Realms number one. So this will contain spoilers for War of the Realms. In case uh, you don't want to know spoilers, I would say turn away now. And while we're talking about this, we're also going to be playing some Marvel versus Capcom. Just some random battles uh, with uh, Thor and Venom and then you know any other characters I switch up. So we have that. We have War of the Realms number one. We have Thor number 12, which is a tie-in issue about Loki. So we're going to talk about that one. We're going to talk about War of the Realms the Punisher issue one. We're going to talk about War of the Realms Issue 2, War of the Realms Dark Elf Realm Issue 1, it's like a one-shot, and War of the Realms Issue 3, uh, and Venom Number 13, which I don't have in physical form. It's waiting for me at Golden Apple, but I did buy the digital copy and read that, so we'll talk about that as well. Um, Jazz Carnage is already in the chat. Uh, John Lee says, I want to know what you think of War of the Realms, so that's what we're going to get into here. Um, Jazz Carnage says, I haven't seen War of the Realms Venom yet. Uh, but uh, we will talk about that today. So if you don't want to know too much, let me know. Uh, but we are going to get into spoilers, so I just want to warn you. Uh, we are going to talk about Magic Venom, as they call him. Um, Malekith, Hela, and Gore are easily my favorite Thor villains. Malekith, by the way, was a character I didn't know really much about. I read a little bit about him in the Walt Simons and stuff way back in the day. But then my only real clear memory of him is probably Thor the Dark World, and he's not very good in that. But then I read The Road to War of Realms, or it's like the War of Realms Prelude trade paperback. They had it on sale for like $3.99 for the digital copy like a couple weeks ago. So I bought it and read it, and it got me so pumped for this series. And it's been a while since I've liked a event book, especially from Marvel, because uh, I feel like a lot of their event book uh, event books are just kind of you know, thrown out there, and, and uh, they have some good ideas. Whoa! We got Anti-Venom too. Oh, we, yeah, we got to talk about Anti-Venom. We'll, uh, we'll start off as Venom, though. That's really cool. I was like, oh, what, what's his other costume? That's pretty sweet. Um, we'll team Venom up with Thor since we're talking about, you know, this crossover here. Because apparently, you know, uh, Venom is going to play a pretty significant part in this War of the Realms crossover, which I'm excited for. Because, I, as you know, I've been reading the Donny Kate stuff, and I haven't loved it as much as a lot of people out there have. So, uh, because I've been a more critical of it than enjoying it, I thought I was going to pull away from Venom comics for a while. But now, we got War of the Realms, which has a good Venom focus. And then we're going to have Savage Avengers, which I also got. But we'll talk about that in another episode. I'll, I'll, I'll wait till like, two or three issues of those come out, because Venom's not really in the first issue that much. He has, like, one panel. So there's not really a, a reason to make a video on that one. But we'll get to it at some point, uh, for sure. Um... Yeah, he does have a nice alt. You're right, man. Anti-Venom, that's really cool. Um, and you don't care about spoilers for War of the Realms? Cool. We, we won't talk about Endgame. We're not here to talk about Endgame uh, or Mortal Kombat 11. We're not here to spoil anything else. Just War of the Realms. Uh, we're not even here to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog anymore because uh, because I wasn't... Uh, <laughs> we were, you said we said our piece with that earlier when we had our earlier matches. So. We're going to be tag team partners? I was making fun of the fact that we were going into the PlayStation Store to get the to download the uh, the the Fight. DLC characters, and Hagar has for four dollars you can buy a shirt for Hagar. I'm like for four dollars, his alternate costume is just him with a like a button down on. It's ridiculous. They did a really bad job with these DLCs. Um, spoilers are okay with me. John Lee says for War of the Realms. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we're gonna definitely talk about that. Uh, I also haven't read War of the Realms, John Lee says. I was just curious if it's worth picking up. Well, I would say yes. Whoa, look at the effects on that symbiote. Hold on, I gotta nerd out for this for a second. <laughs> Shut up and let us eat you. Dang, Venom. Dang, homie. In high school, you was the man, homie. Ooh, nice. Um, so War of the Realms, what's kind of neat about this storyline... Oh, this is... Are we just training? 
think we are. So there's no, uh... I think I picked the wrong mode. <laughs> That's cool. We'll do a couple supers and we'll, we'll get out of here. Boom! <laughs> we'll go back to the main menu. All right, so we got a little taste in there. I haven't got into War of the Realms yet. Uh, we got a little taste in there. I, I, sorry, I was blown away by the visuals of Venom Symbiote. It looked really, really good. Uh, he has the best graphics in the game, Joss Carney says. I would agree. I would agree. That was pretty awesome. So now I'll go to the right mode, and we'll, we'll go and actually get into some matches. Um, but War of the Realms, what's really neat about it is, like I said, I read the prelude to War of the Realms, and the cool thing about the, the prelude was that it, it really fully catches you up. A lot of times when they do those prelude trades, I feel like they don't catch you up fully on what you need to know. And what I liked about the War of the Realms one was that there, it, it did catch you up. It, it had a lot, it had like Walt Simonson stuff in there, it had a lot of the Jason Aaron stuff, Talked, uh, told you about Jane Foster and how she became Thor for a while, and now she's no longer Thor, but she also got rid of cancer. She beat cancer. Uh, so she plays a big part in this. Thor's mother, Freyja, she plays a big part, and she's, I would say, Freyja's kind of the focus of this storyline. Uh, it starts off with Thor being captured by Malekith. Malekith uh, delivers this, like, devious plan that, all, like, that seemingly kills Odin, who is all alone on Asgard, and then also captures Thor. And then, uh, and so you're like, okay, so the two big heavy hitters are out. So Freyja's like, all right, I'm going to go to Midgard and protect Earth. And she has, like, Spider-Man with her and Wolverine and Punisher shows up and Daredevil. And all these Marvel superheroes show up in New York to help her fight off Malekith and his army. Where he united, he united a lot of the enemies of the, the, in the Ten Realms that, uh, you know, are birthed around Jotunheim. Or, uh, not Jotunheim. Jotunheim is where the Frost Giants are. But Idrisel, the Tree of Life. Um, you have these ten realms that Thor and Odin are supposed to watch over. Well, now a lot of them are in disarray, and Malekith has united those ones that are in disarray and has brought them to Earth to uh, fight uh, Midgard and to conquer Midgard. And they want to turn Midgard into a new realm that has, like, the best of all of those other realms. And by the best, I mean the worst, because it's all the villains from those realms. So it's like the Frost Giants and Dark Elves and characters like that. So it's been really awesome. Uh, I'm really liking where they're going with the storyline. We'll take the Space Stone. And we'll have uh, Ryu. And Zero. Sounds like an intriguing introduction. It's pretty cool. Hey, what's up, Siege Blade? How's it going? Siege Blade in the house. Thor misses Rocket. Rocket, you should have gone for the <laughs> Right. Well, we're not talking spoilers here for that movie. But for War of the Realms, though, like I said, so it's Freyja, um, Thor's mother, who's kind of uniting everybody. And she's looking for her son. And she's like, where is he? And Thor has a dog. I didn't know this. He has a dog Who named Thori. And we, uh, are Venom. we are Venom. Oh, it's so cool. I'm going to get distracted a lot. Um, but uh, but so Freyja, she's, she's working with everybody. She's the first person she meets is Spider-Man. And the two of them fight off an attack by uh, the Dark Elves, but they, even though they win kind of that battle and the Warriors 3 show up, uh, New York is still losing. And so everyone's like trying to protect their areas. Daredevil's trying to protect Hell's Kitchen. Punisher just happens to be like on a rooftop. Um, and he's like, uh, has a gun to like a, a criminal's head. And he's like, uh, tell me what I want to know. Where is this crime boss? And the guy's like, oh, I can't tell you. He's going to kill me. And then Punisher's like, Punisher's like, what do you think I'm going to do to you? And there's like, all these dead bodies of these other criminals all around this guy. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty pretty, pretty gru gru gruesome stuff. And Jason Aaron, you can tell he loves writing Frank Castle. Oh, Iron Man, go. Whoa! Proton Cannon! I remember that from Marvel Super Heroes. Oops. They got a guy that tries to sound like Robert Downey Jr. too. Uh, not bad. It's a pretty good impression. Uh, this is why I love Frank so much. <laughs> oh, hold on. See you next Thursday. <laughs> right? Nice. Um, so with New York under attack, it's that's basically what it is. So in the first two issues of War of the Realms, 
it's it's Earth losing. Uh, that's pretty much what happens. And they go to like Avengers Station or wherever it's like Avengers Mountain now, and uh, and they just, you know Tony and Shuri are there making a weapon with one of the dwarfs that like you know makes like the, the you know Mjolnir and like those kind of weapons like like uh, Peter Dinklage's character kind of. Um, so they, the three of them, are making like a we like a new weapon to fight against uh, this invasion with. And while they're doing that, Freja is splitting up everybody into teams, and she's telling them like where to go. And as she, you know, before she does this, and as Midgard is being attacked and New York is being taken over, um, oh, boom, KO. She uh, before she does that, Loki shows up, and Loki's like, "Look, I'm sorry, I teamed up with Malekith. I helped him reach this point." But I didn't know this was going to happen. I'm so sorry. And they're like, yeah, why should we trust you? You're Loki. Of course you're, you know, always do this. And he's like, no, I really tried to do the right thing this time. I thought I could stop him and double cross him before he could do this. And he anticipated that. And now he's he's double crossed me and I can't help you guys. And uh, right at that time, Laufey, uh, Loki's father, shows up, the frost giant. And he shows up and eats Loki and uh, essentially kills Loki. And so what's cool about that is that's where the issue one ends and Freja and everyone's like, Loki just died trying to save us and it's still for nothing because Earth is still being lost. The cool thing is this entire Thor issue, Thor number 12, is all about Loki being digested. And while he's being digested, he's visited by three ghosts, kind of like Scrooge style. Uh, Loki of the past, before he learned magic. Um, so you could see Loki as a Viking who fought alongside Thor and Odin, uh, which was pretty cool. And then it shows him in like the recent present where he was like a young kid. Uh, and he was like, you know, before he turned, try to turn good and double cross Malekith. And then you also see him from the future where he's the all butcher. Uh, the, the God butcher was like this creature that used like a symbiote to make a dark sword at one point. And that was something Jason Aaron added to the continuity of, uh, of Thor. And, uh, oops, sorry, there's a plane going overhead. So it's going to get a little loud in here for a second. Um, but that was something they added. That's something Donnie Cates is kind of touching on a little bit with Null and like his storyline uh, in in the book. So it's kind of neat that that continuity is kind of being shared there. And it's it, I kind of like that part, that portion of the Donnie Cates stuff is that he's like referencing that Jason Aaron stuff. But uh, at the same time, like with this though, it's more it's more focused on like you know Loki looking at what could have been and what might be, and him becoming the All Butcher, and he he actually births himself outside like within ego the planet gets the all butcher power becomes the all butcher destroys ego the living planet and then decides to you know try to take over all the realms and that could be his future like loki could become more powerful one day and they're like no we, we can't have that like uh, so and he himself doesn't want that so he fights against it so it's cool kind of seeing him seeing like his three forms like what could be uh yeah i'm talking about uh, gore the god butcher yeah um, that's him. He wielded the Necro Sword, which was forged out of the corpse of a Celestial, along with the um, Symbiotes, right? Which is uh, from and Donnie Cates references that in one of his I books, I think, as well. Like that big floating me. Celestial head where Null was forged. Um, and so, yeah, the Necro Sword—that's what it's called. So it's kind of cool. So you kind of see that referenced in there. But my absolute favorite thing, like I said, Punisher—he was like interrogating a bad guy on the roof. And then all of a sudden these frost giants start showing up and Laufey and, you know, right after they eat Loki and stuff. And the the criminal that Frank Castle is, like, interrogating is like, all right, man, you going to let me go now? Because obviously there's a bigger threat. And Frank's like, yeah, I'm going to let you go. And Frank, without even looking at the guy, blows his brains out. And Frank's like, all right, now that all these criminals are dead, I'm going to just turn my attention to these dark elves and frost giants. So Frank goes nuts. And I love this cover where Frank is like, blowing the brains out of a, a frost giant. He actually like hooks up two bombs to the Achilles tendons of a frost giant giant and blows its feet off. And then the frost giant like falls to the ground and then Frank just unloads like a, a Gatling gun into its brain. Uh, it's so awesome. Frank is like a kid in a candy store. He literally does not have to hold back and he is loving uh, killing these monsters. And he found out that the the, the like as fate would have it the dark elves are allergic to iron and all of frank's bullets obviously are iron uh forged by himself you know like you know he makes a lot of his own bullets and weaponry so it's so good dude venom versus nemesis i'm loving this Ooh, he's kicking my butt though he's really kicking my butt come on 
I'm trying to like do a super and he won't do it. Dang it, he blocked it. <laughs> Get him! Yes! Alright, we got a little bit more life than him. Is that gonna be enough? Ah, he got me with the rocket! No, Venom! <laughs> Um, so yeah, so Frank is like going nuts in this book. And what I like too is that they show a little bit of humanity in Frank. He finds this hospital of people that are trying to get out of New York and they're going, they want to get through the Lincoln Tunnel to get out to New Jersey. And Frank's like, all right. And like, and the doctor says, look, just leave us. Like, you know, no one's going to save us. Nobody cares about my little hospital. We're in like a bad part of town. Nobody cares about my patients. Uh, it, it just, just go, just go be the Punisher and just let us, you know, die here. And Punisher goes and finds like a, a van, or not a van, but a bus full of convicts that were in the middle of being transported to another prison. And he you know, takes over the van because they're all locked in there still. And they're like, help, someone get us out of here. And Frank goes in and he says, look, I'm going to recruit all of you, all of you scumbags. I'm going to give you a chance to do something right. And he goes, so uh, come with me. I'm going to let you all out. And we're going to go help these people at this hospital. And one guy's like, no, screw that. Let's Once he lets us out, let's all just rush him. And there's no way he can overtake all of us. So Frank goes, does anyone else feel that way? And everyone else gets quiet. And then he goes, okay, just you. And then he blows that guy's brains out. And he's just like, all right. He's like, uh, so everybody else, you're with the plan? And he's Spider like, uh, everyone's like, yeah, we'll, we're, we'll join you. Um, all right, we're going to do anti-venom and negative zone Spider-Man. Dante. Let's rock, baby. I need my rematch on uh, Nemesis, though. Nova. Hey, what's up? Nemesis. <laughs> Battle without limits. So, uh, so Frank is like he goes back to the hospital and he has all these like new, you know, recruits, essentially all these criminals, and he tells the doctor, he's like, I care about you guys. I care that you're innocent people, and I don't want you to die here. And he's like, so I have a plan. He goes but uh, you're going to have to put a lot of faith in me. And so he's like, all right, everyone, go through the Lincoln Tunnel. We're going to follow you. He gave all those scumbags guns, and he's like, and, or bats and weapons and stuff, and he's like, all right, we're going to, we're going to, our goal is to make sure everyone gets safe to the other side. And if any of you double-cross me or try to hurt one of the people or try to, like, wound them so that they're, you know, left behind for, for dead and you get to get away, he's like, if you do anything like that, I'm going to take you out. So that's where the first issue of that ends. Um, I also wonder about the continuity of these, because uh, that's what Frank's doing in his own series, but in the main book, he has a completely different role, of course. So I, I, I get that's the one of the things about the um, about these books that I find annoying whenever they do these event books is it's like they come up with these plans for like really interesting ideas, but then it's like the left hand doesn't talk to the right hand. It's like I would rather Frank just have one mission in the book, either have him be this role here. Or have him do the role that Freja picks for him. But either way, I'd rather just one version, one story for him, and not like, you know, three where you're wondering when each one takes place. Nice. Nice. That was a cool super. He used all of our abilities. Whoa. Yeah, Nemesis is really big. Switch, switch, switch. There we go. <laughs> Eddie! Oh, look at the... Even the white symbiote looks really good. Like, they did a really good job on this. Wow. I think Frank and Cletus are probably Marvel's most violent characters. I like how Punisher made his own mini Thunderbolts. Yeah, I like that too. Dang, he baited me and I fell for it. Parker! Go! Boom! Aw, oh, dang it. I thought he stayed webbed from Venom's thing. Dang it. Dang. Oh, dang! Spidey died! Oh, crap. <laughs> we might have a repeat. Nemesis is... He's tough, man. None of my specials land, too. These guys are just... They just hold back. <laughs> like, like, literally hold the back button. Boom! Revenge is mine. 
Yeah, I like Frank too. He's pretty awesome. And in this book, he's really great. So it's written by Jerry Duggan, who writes Savage Avengers. So I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how he writes Frank in Savage Avengers, especially the way Savage Avengers number one ends. I'm really curious to see where it goes. Uh, but then that kind of leads into War of the Realms two. And like I said, after Loki died and sacrificed himself, you had Freja, who is. Um, you know, divvying, divvying up the teams because they're all losing in this one. And you have Frank and uh, Wolverine kind of meet up in this one. I like that they're on the cover there. You have Jane Foster uh, trying to fight. You know, she jumps on a Pegasus to try to like help fight uh, and take out Malekith. And, uh, you know, and you have like Valkyrie and these people going like, look, Jane, you're very important to what's coming. But, you know, you gotta you gotta stay behind right now like you know you don't have any powers or anything and she's like i don't care i was thor but now i, I don't want to be helpless anymore so jane foster steps up in the second issue and, and tries to join the battle she even finds the people that are um like these three witches that are trying to cast a spell and they're protect uh, preventing dr strange from like teleporting everybody out of new york which is what he wants to do but his magic's being messed with and it's because of these three witches from this other realm that uh, malekith brought in planning for dr strange to try you know to intervene so, uh, so yeah, Malekith really thought of everything when he brings these, you know, different forces in to counteract all these heroes and what they're capable of. And uh, so his plan was really good, and that's why he takes over in the world pretty much in two issues. And that's why he's you know, they dominate the heroes so badly. Um, and the heroes are way in way over their head. And with Thor missing and the heroes kind of divided, and you know, Freyja going, all right, this is what I need. I need you know all of you have an important role to play some of this was predestined to happen but i don't know the outcome and that comes down to you and your actions so i'm going to split you guys up into teams the way i see fit so we can take back your realm and that's kind of where they go from issue two into issue three but those three witches that show up in that first uh in that in this issue in the second issue here that jane foster fights against and, and banishes before they're banished one of the witches teleports away and shows up in venom number 13 and uh, Venom, Eddie Brock is still, you know, he's with his son who his son doesn't know that um, that Eddie is his father. He thinks he's an older brother. So uh, so he, Eddie's keeping that going right now. But with all this stuff happening, Eddie's like, we got to get to Rex Strickland's la like, like hideout that he had in the first issue of Donny Cates' Venom run. Um, you know, where in issue two where Venom was like Eddie Brock was tied down to a chair and where he fought Null in issue six. That little base of operations is still there, and he's like, look, it's safe, there's weapons there, I'm going to take my son there and lock him in there so he's protected, and then I'm going to go get involved and, and try to help this battle. I still want to be a hero. So Eddie Brock is still willing to rise to the occasion and fight back, um, but it's just not you know, going too, too well uh, for him because he has no powers. So after he fights these Dark Elves and kind of starts to lose, one of the witches shows up and says, you know... There's something about you. There's something dark about you that I, you know, that we could probably use um, on our our side, like on Malekith's side. So I have this dream stone here. If you, it's like a crystal. If you make a wish on it, it'll bring whatever you most desire. So Eddie, of course, wishes for his symbiote back, but he doesn't get his symbiote. He just gets like a symbiote that he can control. So he doesn't say we are Venom. He says I am Venom. And it's, it's bound by some kind of magic. So what I like about Ivan Coelho's artwork is that he did this... Uh, he did this thing where, like, the, the Venom symbiote had, like, these... Like, these... Almost like the Time Stone, how it puts those things... Gauntlets around, uh, you know, Doctor Strange when he casts a spell. These stone... These, like, gauntlets are around him that are, like, made of energy. And Venom is, like, swinging around fighting. There's, like, bones protruding out of him. He looks like a different kind of Venom. I should have the picture up on screen here when you're watching this later on YouTube. Um, but it just looks really cool. What I like about that is that it's, like, it's a different suit. It's a different thing. And then what he ends up doing is because it's not... He has full control over it. It's not a living being. Eddie is able to fight back against the witch. And he, like, cuts the witch's hand off and sends the witch back to issue two of you know, War of the Realms, where it then gets attacked by Jane Foster because it lost focus for a minute to go do this side thing. So that continuity is kind of neat and it kind of fits in. But then in issue three of War of the Realms, when Venom shows up, he's not the magic Venom. The artist for War of the Realms just drew him as regular Venom, which I'm like, oh, that's bad, continuity-wise, that's bad. Even though, um, dialogue-wise, Malekith mentions, hey, I, I kind of know what you are. Look, you, you're kind of surrounded by, like, my... You have kind of like a stain on you, like you're not the real Venom. So uh, I'm gonna use you for my my own means. So when Venom shows up to fight Malekith, he gets a few good licks in. 
And then, uh... Ooh, look at that. And then, uh, and then he gets captured by Malekith. Yo, Seek, what's up, Cryptic Venom? How's it going, dude? We're just talking about the War of the Realms comic book. I figured I'd make, like, a nice long episode where I just kind of rant and play this game and talk about War of the Realms, because I'm really enjoying the, the book a lot. And like I said, like Punisher, he's off in the Lincoln Tunnel helping people, but then also in in issue two and issue three and this one shot, Dark Elf Realm, he's actually the leader of a group that's going to go find the Dark Bifrost because the main Bifrost has been destroyed and um, Heimdall is now blind. And then uh, Daredevil actually overhears Freja say, "Hey, my our guy who sees everything." Heimdall, he's now blind, he can't use the Bifrost, and he can't even have access to his full power. So Daredevil goes over and says, hey, I hear you need help with a blind guy learning to see again. And I was like, oh, what are they going to do with Daredevil? And then in issue three, what they do is they make him in charge of the Bifrost. Daredevil is the new Heimdall, and he sits at the, uh, at the, at the Bifrost where it's broken, and he has Heimdall's sword, and now he can see everything with his power, like through Daredevil's sight. He can hear, or essentially, everything in the universe. And uh, and he becomes the god without fear. And I'm like, oh my god, it's so cool, the, what, the stuff they do with Daredevil. So uh, Daredevil has like a purpose now. Frank, he's rallied together Ghost Rider, She-Hulk, who's now just Hulk, I think, uh, Blade, and Freja. And all of them go on a, a suicide mission to uh, guard the, the dark Bifrost. So that way they can, when the main Bifrost crumbles, which it does. Daredevil is only there temporarily to help it, uh, so he can transport all the heroes to where they need to go. But then when it falls, now Freja and them and Punisher are like, alright, now our job is to stand our ground at this Bifrost, at the evil Bifrost, and kill anything that comes at us. And Frank's like, okay. <laughs> like, I'm down for that. So uh, so that's kind of the role that those characters play throughout issue uh, 2 and 3. But in this issue, I felt this was the weakest one, the Dark Elf Realm. It's written by a guy named Brian Hill, who's a really nice guy, and he's written a couple of good things, but he's also writing on the, a writer on the Teen Titan show, the, the live-action Titan show, which I do not like at all. And this issue is pretty much a bunch of people sitting around talking for a whole 32 pages that cost $5. And I felt like that was a real punch in the gut. I'm like, dude, I, I didn't like that at all. I thought that was a real waste of $5 for me, because... I wanted, I mean, there's some action in it for sure, but it's mostly just a setup and them ex like sitting around talking and Freja going like, all right, here's why you need to go on these missions and I need to vet you guys and, and see if you're worthy of going on this mission. I'm like, she doesn't have time to do that. The world's being taken over. Though her son is missing. Her husband could be dead. Even though Odin shows up in issue, I think, three to, to reveal that he's still alive and join the battle. Uh, and then Captain America and Luke Cage and Iron Fist, they all get sent with Spider-Man with uh, weapons and Wolverine with, like, enchanted weapons to go into Jotunheim to fight the Frost Giants and save Thor, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but we'll get into that in a second because the Dark Elf Realm book I want to talk about for a minute here is not that good. It's definitely the weakest of all the tie-in issues I've read. And people just sitting around talking, it's just so boring, man. It's so boring. So I, I did not really like it too, too much. Um, we're going to do another anti-venom um, episode, and then we'll do Chun-Li. Do the Mind Stone, and we'll fight off against... Who haven't we seen yet? I haven't seen Spencer. And... Nova. Hey, what's up? I'm Nova. Hey, what's up? I'm Nova. Only one team will be left That's cool. The Daredevil stuff is cool. Um, I'm, go I'm doing all right, man. How are you, Cryptic? I'm doing all right. So, uh, so yeah, so that carries us through most of the time. There are other tie-ins, like X-Men came out with a tie-in. There's something called War Scrolls, which I just found out about today, but I just didn't have enough money to get them. But War Scrolls tells the story of Daredevil and what he kind of goes through. So I'll probably pick those up because I really like Daredevil being like the new Heimdall. I think that's awesome. But then in issue three, like I said, it's a rescue mission to go get Thor and to uh, retake the realm of Earth because now Earth's being divided up by um, by Malekith and his forces. And... Uh, Oh. And it, it's getting pretty nasty and pretty bloody. And so far, no heroes have died, but uh, but a lot of people have, <laughs> for sure. And a lot of elves have died. Punisher's killed a lot of people, uh, a lot of dark elves and stuff. But okay. 
Oh, she doesn't do hood open. Been fine, had today off, so I got to relax. Nice, yeah, me too. I'm eating so I can sleep for like 20 hours. <laughs> nice. Nice. You made it home. Nice. Good, good. Yeah, I'm going to be leaving here in a few minutes. This will probably be the last battle, so I can go eat too. Plus, we're near at the end anyway, because the book, uh, issue three ends uh, of War of the Realms, it ends with, um, you know, like I said, Venom gets captured by Malekith, and uh, it's going to be used for some nefarious purpose coming up. I think they're going to talk about that soon. I think in Thor number 14, they're going to go back in time and tell like an early Thor adventure, and he's going to fight off against like an ancient symbiote or something. So that's pretty cool. Venom! Wow, we were getting our butts kicked. Boom. Uh, but the book ends with them finding Thor at the end of a river of blood that's all frost giant blood. It's like a river of purple blood going out throughout Jotunheim. And when they get to the end, basically Thor has killed every single frost giant all by himself. But his arm is gone. He's, he's lost one arm in the battle. Which makes sense, because his future self has like a gold arm uh, that he made for himself. Uh, that's like kind of its own weapon. And then, uh, and then also his eye is messed up. I don't think it's been removed, but it's it is messed up. Oh dang, he might be dead here soon. Get him! Get him! Get him! Yes, Chun Li. Dang, I was hoping her kicks would land. But yeah, seeing that last page where uh, where Thor is just surrounded by dead frost giants and he's missing his arm, it's so awesome. <laughs> oh, KO! Chun-Li gets the KO. Nice. So yeah, it's it's been fun. Like, War of the Realms, like I said, we, we covered a lot of ground, which is good. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, like, talk comics and, you know, get your guys' impression and play this game at the same time. So I'm glad we were able to do that today. Through all the, you know, the BS we had to go through to get this game working and get all the DLC characters added, it's nice. It's nice that we actually got here uh, and got to do this. So War of the Realms, what we covered today, again, issue one, we talked a little bit about the prelude to War of the Realms, the graphic novel. I think there's a book out called The Art of War of the Realms, where it's like all the art from the different series. So I might pick that up because I'm interested. I really like the designs of a lot of these characters. But again, like I love what Aban Coelho did in Venom number 13 with Venom and making him Magic Venom. And I was really bummed to read War of the Realms number three and not see Magic Venom portrayed. They kind of talk about him like he's Magic Venom, but he doesn't have the look of Magic Venom. And that's what bums me out about series like this is that they don't have like, like all the artists and everyone don't seem to be communicating with each other. Because I would have loved Iban's design to go into the main book. Um, so who knows? Maybe maybe we'll fix that in the next issue, like issue four. Because I think. The War of the Realms is coming out every two weeks, which is impressive. Hopefully it's not late and it actually keeps that schedule so we can keep doing episodes like this. And we'll keep coming back every time they do, like, you know, we did one through three here. So maybe we'll do, like, issues four and five and all the spinoffs. And then we'll do a third episode where we talk about issue six and the conclusion about what happens to Venom. Uh, and we'll do it while playing Venom matches on this game. So I appreciate you guys being here today. If you're watching later on YouTube, thanks so much for watching. If you're here live, I really appreciate you guys being here. Kitty says, I ate one slice of pizza and one of... Uh, like pass out right now well don't worry we're almost done here so you can pass out soon after i hope your your little one's doing well uh how's the baby doing uh you know kitty had a child recently and uh which was really awesome so congratulations to kitty and uh let us know how the little one's doing and if it's you know if she's sleeping right now so let us know um and then yeah and like war of the realms if you're out there and you're you know want to know about war of the realms hopefully we covered at least enough I know I you know, spoiled a lot, but I gave the spoiler warning at the, at the beginning, so hopefully it didn't ruin the enjoyment for you guys uh, who watched this episode. And if you, if you haven't read War of the Realms, I would say pick it up, because as far as event books go, I really like it. It's, uh, I haven't liked an event book from Marvel in, a, in quite a while. And so this one is really great, especially I have not even been reading the Jason Aaron Thor stuff. I read like the God Butcher, the first storyline, when it first came out, and then I read the first arc of Jane Foster, but I haven't read anything other than that. And then I picked up the War of the Realms Prelude trade paperback, which prepared me for this. And then just reading this is fun. Like, even if your only knowledge of Marvel characters is the movies, you'll still be able to catch up and be caught up with this. Because this kind of feels like a lot of these characters are written as, like, their movie counterpart versions and not so much their comic versions. So it's an easy entry point for people who just watch the movies. Uh, but it is fun. And then, like I said, I've covered War of the Realms number one, two, and three, Thor number 12, Punisher number one, 
um, and uh, Venom number 13 and Strike Force the Dark Elf Realm, which I thought, like I said, was the weakest of all of them uh, because it really was just a bunch of people sitting around like sizing each other up to go on a battle and I would have much rather have them have gone on some kind of battle uh, and not be go through these things where it's like all in their head because it's like very un- interesting stuff. Um, but Cryptic says, have a good night. Thank you, Cryptic. Kitty, uh, John Lee sends you some love. Everybody else who's been here, thank you so much for watching the episode today. I'm glad we got this game to work, at least enough to do some mission, or like them, some battles, random battles, and play as Venom and Anti-Venom, which was really cool. The graphics on them looked amazing, and it totally salvaged this day off for me, because I was looking forward to this for like two days now, and I'm glad we got to at least experience some of this game and also cover War of the Realms, which is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while now. So I'll put this up as a Venom vlog episode, and we'll do maybe, like I said, two more of these uh, as War of the Realms keeps coming out. So uh, be on the lookout for those. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, and we have other Venom versus stuff coming up very soon. But I want to hear what you think. If you're not here live, you're watching on YouTube, let me know down in the comments below what do you think of, of Magic Venom. Um, you know, throughout this episode, hopefully I edited in some pictures of what he looks like and some of the scenes from Venom number 13 because I don't have the physical copy, you know, so I only have the digital one. But I took some screen grabs from it. So hopefully you guys check those out and, and dig them. And definitely go pick up these books. Uh, War of the Realms is a lot of fun. And, I, you know, I want to see more good event books like this from Marvel. So definitely support this one. Hopefully we'll get more. Uh, you know, in the future. I'm sure we're going to get more events no matter what in the future, but hopefully get, we, we get more good ones and more ones that are like have themes like this, which this is really gruff and intense and, and action oriented, um, but uh, but also there's some stakes here. And the people that die uh, in it are, uh, you know, the, the, de- the deaths have some weight to them. And then they explore them even more, like Loki died and they spent a whole issue exploring his death in the Thor book. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, Jazz Carnage says, take care and enjoy the rest of your day, Seek. You guys, too, thank you so much for being here. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll have more Venom stuff coming up soon and more War of the Realm stuff in a couple weeks when issues 4 and 5 come out. I'll cover those in a in a separate episode with more gameplay and more tie-ins and all that stuff, and then we'll conclude with a third episode. So we'll do, like, our own War of the Realms trilogy, Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. And so we'll talk more about the heroes taking back their realm in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching the show. Again, I will see you all in the future. Peace.